What was your company's mission? I don't know. What? You, an uncommissioned officer, you don't know your company's mission? You must be very stupid. Well, I guess I am, if you say so. Tell me, Riley, do you ever expect to see your family again? Someday. Then just remember, some prisoners are shot trying to escape. United States Army presents The Big Picture, an official report produced for the armed forces and the American people. Now to show you part of the big picture, here is Sergeant Stuart Queen. The Korean War brought forth for the first time in the history of our country the need for a written code of conduct delineating for the members of the armed forces a set of standards by which to govern themselves when in combat or when captured by the enemy. Today, the big picture shows you the kind of training which the army is giving its soldiers to prepare them for every eventuality on the field of battle. The code of conduct was signed into law by President Eisenhower as commander in chief of the armed forces on August 17, 1955. The standards it embodies represent the official guide which will give America's fighting men the security of knowing exactly what is expected of them in every situation. was a major enemy offensive that penetrated our lines, and Corps withdrew to prepared positions in the rear. But all units were not able to withdraw. Company A, 1st Battle Group, 64th Infantry. been cut off. That is Captain Russell, the company commander. He's in a tough spot. Will he hold his position and fight, or break out and return to friendly areas? As far as I can tell, we've been bypassed and cut off. I want each and every man to understand what's going on. I've decided to stay here and fight. So he's going to stay and fight. It's a risk, but in this case, justifiable. So warn your men not to waste any food, water, or ammunition. Okay, move out. I'll be around to check with each of you later. How you guys doing? Okay, Mitch. Mike, how much ammo you got left for that AR? I'm down to three magazines. Yep. Here's a couple of full bandoliers. You better start reloading those empty magazines now. Yeah, thanks. Just know we're never going to get out of this alive. What kind of crazy talk is that? You flipping your lid or something, kid? We're almost all out of ammo. What are we going to do if they attack again? We're going to get captured for sure. Captured hell. Ain't hey, nobody in this hole going to get captured. If we run out of ammo, we'll fight those cruds with our rifle butts. Lieutenant Briggs. Yes, sir. Got a cigarette? 
I wish I did. I smoked my last one a couple hours ago. Wait a minute. Bearcat 6. This is Bearcat 2. They're masking again. I think we're in for another attack. I'll be right up. Well, looks like we're going to get hit again. Go ahead with the plans I outlined. I'll be up at the OP. Yes, sir. Does every man understand he's to hold his fire until I give the signal? Yes, sir. Here they come. That's just about close enough. Commence firing! Fire! a number of our men. It is an American soldier's duty to use every means within his power to escape if he is captured. The best time to escape is during the first minutes or hours of capture. For with each step the prisoner takes, he is moving farther and farther away from his own forces. Here's a scoop. The captain's dead, but we don't stand a chance here. So we'll break up into three and four man teams and work our way back to our own lines. Now here's how we'll do it. Evasion by infiltration. The very same plan Captain Russell was considering before he was killed. Weapon squad at 2115. Now remember, we'll all be traveling the same route, so be careful in the dark. So tell me, how many men did you leave behind? I don't know, sir. The enemy tries to gain information almost immediately after capture, even as far forward as the company command post. Here, the commander is primarily interested in tactical information of immediate importance to his own unit. But there is only one kind of information to give the enemy. Name, rank, service number, and date of birth. Nothing else. Good. This man goes to headquarters. Next prisoner. During our attack, your mortar fire stopped. What happened? I have no idea, sir. Did they run out of ammunition? I'm sorry, sir. I really don't know. My name is George Edwards, Private First Class. Serial number 1462317.
born January 31st, 1933. Etc., etc., etc. I know, I know, you will not talk. That is all right. It is not my job to make you talk. We have people at headquarters who will do that. Good. take this one too. Next. Well, what have we here? A non-commissioned officer. Tell me, how did you get captured? Did you run out of ammunition or did you, well, surrender? Or maybe you were disgusted with the whole business, eh? Look, you can save your breath. All you're getting from me is my name, rank, serial number, and date of birth. Period. Oh, oh a tough guy. Well, my friend, we have ways of handling tough guys. You'll talk. God, this one also goes to headquarters. You are Private First Class Edward Harrison. Yes, sir. I won't keep you long. Listen to me, Harrison. The sooner you talk, the sooner we'll take care of you. Sir, I'm getting very dizzy. How many men were in your company, Harrison? I can't answer that, sir. What was the name of your company commander? I'm sorry, sir. I can't answer that question. You cannot answer or you will not answer. Which is it? Both. Why? What difference could it possibly make now? Your company has been wiped out. Sir, according to the Geneva Convention, I am required to give only my name, rank, serial number, and date of birth. I also want you to know that we did not start this war. And that we only want peace and freedom. Now we know that you are not fighting for a cause. But that under your system of government, you are forced to fight. That is why we have no quarrel with the soldiers. But you must cooperate. Is there any reason why you shouldn't? Yeah, there is. I'm a soldier in the United States Army. And under the Geneva Convention, all I have to give you is my name, rank, serial number, and date of birth. Very noble, Sergeant. But that attitude will get you nowhere. You must remember, you are in our hands, our prisoner. That's right. And as a prisoner of war, I have certain rights under the Geneva Convention. Let me give you a little piece of advice, my friend. Forget the Geneva Convention. What we do here is our business. We can do anything we want with you, even have you shot. Who will find out? We haven't informed anyone yet that you are a prisoner, as we're supposed to under that convention. At this level of interrogation, the threat of death is sometimes used. But this will not be carried out, because the interrogator knows that he must send Sergeant Riley to higher headquarters for more formal questioning. So you see, Sergeant, actually you are all alone. In fact, right now you are about the loneliest man in the world. So let us be sensible about this whole thing. Now, what was your unit? I can't answer that question. All right, Riley. You continue this and you will be hungry for a long time. I have tried to reason with you. I have tried to make you understand. And now I'm going to send you to some people who are not as understanding as I am. 
Before I continue, Edwards, would you mind stepping forward so I can see better? Now, you seem to know quite a bit about the Geneva Convention, Edwards. Not too much, sir. But I can give you the paragraph to which I'm referring. Really? And which paragraph is that? Section 1, Article 17. Oh, I see. How long have you been in the Army? My name is George Edwards. Private First Class, serial number 14623175. All right, Edwards, I have no more questions. I'm sending you along for further interrogation, where they will not be as lenient with you as I have. God! Is that all you have to say? Yeah, I know my rights. Rights? What rights? As far as I am concerned, you have no rights. Can't you understand, Riley, that you are a prisoner of war, and as such you must abide by the rules and regulations of the detaining power? As far as you are concerned, the war is over, and there is nothing you can do to affect its outcome. So be smart. Cooperate. You'll be much better off in the end, believe me. Now, once again, what was your unit? My name is Michael Riley, Sergeant. Serial number 12122613, born February 15th, 1928. You know, Riley, we can make life for you as a prisoner very easy. On the other hand, we could make it very, very difficult. I think it's about time that you and I got to understand each other, Riley. Why don't you sit down? Go ahead. No. On the floor. Now, once again, what was your company's mission? To close with and destroy or capture the enemy. And how wide a front did your company occupy? I'm sorry, sir, I don't know. I'm only a PFC. They don't tell us those things. We are now at enemy hire headquarters. At this level, the interrogators are more highly trained and have more tricks up their sleeves than their counterparts at lower levels. Take this two-way mirror, for instance. Behind it, another interrogator studies the prisoner and monitors the interrogation. If it appears that a different approach is required to break down the prisoner, he will take over. 
A tape recorder can be extremely useful to review a prisoner's answers and to determine whether he is lying. Or it can be used to splice together unrelated words and sentences to manufacture statements and confessions which in fact the prisoner did not make. The doctored tape is then broadcast for propaganda purposes. I'm sorry, sir. I can only give you my name, rank, serial number, and date of birth. Very well. I have no further questions. If you'll fill out that form, we will be finished. What's it for? It's the regular Red Cross form. You fill it out, and we will forward it to a neutral power. They will send it to your people at home, and your army advise them that you are a prisoner of war and safe. Sometimes the enemy's efforts to obtain information appear innocent and legitimate, but they are usually fakes, like this Red Cross form, which asks for more information than the prisoner's name, rank, service number, and date of birth. You can use that pencil. If Edwards falls for this trick, he will not be the first prisoner of war to do so. I was under the impression that all your men had arrived safely and were all present and accounted for. That's right, sir. Every man is present and accounted for. Lieutenant Winters, do you know a Sergeant First Class Mitchell Levine? Yes, sir. He was a squad leader in the first platoon. I believe he was among those taken prisoner. Well, Sergeant Levine's not a prisoner anymore. He made contact with the second battle group a half hour ago. They're bringing him over here now. I knew they couldn't hold him. What a guy. Now, once again, Sergeant, what battle group are you from? I can't answer that question. You wouldn't expect your own soldiers to give out that information, would you? Never mind our soldiers. There's no comparison. Our soldiers are fighting for a glorious cause. Yours are being reduced to fighting for a rotten system. That's a matter of opinion. Edward Harrison, George Edwards, Michael Riley. Wherever they go, we can be sure they will continue to resist.
Halt, who's there? Halt, who's there? Hold it, Bill. He might be one of those guys they told us to watch out for. Keep him covered. American fighting man. I serve in the forces which guard my country and our way of life. I am prepared to give my life in their defense. I will never surrender of my own free will. If in command, I will never surrender my men while they still have the means to resist. If I am captured, I will continue to resist by all means available. I will make every effort to escape and aid others to escape. I will accept neither parole nor special favors from the enemy. If I become a prisoner of war, I will keep faith with my fellow prisoners. I will give no information or take part in any action which might be harmful to my comrades. If I am senior, I will take command. If not, I will obey the lawful orders of those appointed over me and will back them up in every way. When questioned, should I become a prisoner of war, I am bound to give only my name, rank, service number, and date of birth. I will evade answering further questions to the utmost of my ability. I will make no oral or written statements disloyal to my country and its allies or harmful to their cause. I'll never forget that I am an American fighting man, responsible for my actions and dedicated to the principles which made my country free. I'll trust in my God and in the United States of America. The Big Picture is an official report for the armed forces and the American people. Produced by the Army Pictorial Center. Presented by the Department of the Army in cooperation with this station.